Um, okay, so we need this force. We need this force P, because once it thermally expands, are you trying to record it? Okay. So once it thermally expands, um, you're going to need this force P, because this is going to be this is going to be fixed. There's a wall here, so um, we have to get this force P. We know we know the constraint for uh, the normal stress is minus 11 ksi, so we can get that force P. So P. Well, let's start with the stress. Sigma A L is equal to minus P over A. So P is equal to minus sigma A L times the area, the cross-sectional area of aluminum. So they give you the cross-sectional area of aluminum is 2.8 inches squared, and they give you the stress is minus 11 KSI. So this is minus 11. The minus and minus is a positive KSI multiplied by the cross-sectional area, which is 2.8 inches squared. So the force you get uh, is 30.8 kips. All right, so you get 30.8 kips. So now this is known, this is known. This length over here is for, uh, for bronze, and it's 14 inches. This length over here is 18 inches. So I'm not going to plug and chug for you guys. You guys can do this on your, by yourself. Um, we know this. They give you this in the problem. They give you this in the problem. They give you this and this. So this is, this is 14. This is 18. They give you the thermal expansion coefficient for both of the materials. So we know everything now. We just solve for P. So now we can get this delta T, which we need. So you could rearrange everything, move stuff to the other side, and solve for delta T. So the delta T you get is equal to 126.6 degrees F. Okay, so um, they want to know they want to know the temperature of the aluminum bar. They give you in the beginning of the problem the initial temperature uh, of this aluminum bar. Ti is equal to 75 degrees F. So um, we know delta T is equal to this. But delta T is also equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. That's equal to delta T. And we know delta T, we can get the final temperature, move the initial temperature to this side. You can solve for the final temperature. So TF is equal to 75 plus 126.6. So that is 201.6 degrees F. Okay, so that's part A of the problem. They ask for the final temperature of the aluminum rod. All right, the next part, they ask for um, what is the exact length of the aluminum bar. All right, so we have to know how the aluminum bar deforms. Okay, so I'm going to erase this since we don't need this anymore. Okay, so now that the gap is closed, we have to know how the aluminum bar deforms. Okay, so what would be the delta of the aluminum bar? Remember, the delta from the aluminum bar is um, the thermal expansion delta, like how much it's going to expand and how much it's going to be compressed from the mechanical uh, delta. So it's so the mechanical delta, remember, was minus. A, L, I'll call it M, and then the thermal expansion would be positive plus delta A, L, T. Okay, so you can solve for delta A, L, and this is equal to minus P, L over A, T for the aluminum, and then you have plus alpha A, L uh, delta T multiplied by L, A, L. Okay, so we know this length. The length was what? 18 inches. Okay, so we know this value. We solved for it in the beginning of the problem. We know everything. We know delta T. We solved for that in the part one. So we get delta AL. Is you can just substitute the values in. You get um, 0 0.0107 uh, 2 inch. Okay, so now you get this value for delta. And then they want the exact length. So we, we know the original length is uh, 18 inches, and it'll deform this much. So you just add the original length to this value, you'll get the exact length of the aluminum bar. So LAL is equal to the original length, I'll call it L naught, plus delta AL. So 
So the original length was 18 inches. And this uh, deformation is uh, 0 .01, uh, 0.01072 inches. So the total uh, length, the exact length after the thermal expansion is, is 18.0107 inches. Okay? That's for the RFB. Any questions? All right. Next one. Oh, you didn't copy? Grab it from the front. We don't have any friends. <laughs> 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 I'll show you the solution after. I'm just trying to make up time from what my friends have. Okay, the next problem is something you're going to do in uh, 316 when you take it. It's a lab, the lab course. This is like the exact problem you're going to do in lab. I'm not even joking. The specimen looks the same too. Wait, is it the lab for uh, 220? Uh, no, 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 316. It's a mechanical engineering lab. So they give you this uh, tensile specimen. It looks like this. And you guys will see this in the lab when you get to it, when you're doing this. Okay, so they, they give you a strain gauge over here. They give you the length of it. This length is two inches and they give you the width of this uh, member is over here the neck of it is one half of an inch and they give you the thickness the thickness is in this direction it's in the z direction so they give you the thickness is one sixteenth of an inch okay and they give you also the material property the young's modulus it's it's steel 29 times 10 to the 6 PSI, and they also give you um, the Poisson ratio, which is 0.30, and what else? And they ask uh, to determine the resulting change in the two-inch uh, gauge length. Okay, so first they want to know this: how much is this uh, this length from A to B? This is where the gauge is. How much it's going to deform? Okay. So we know this is only mechanical. They they don't give you anything about thermal expansion. They don't give you the temperature. So it's just purely mechanical. So this deformation, it's going to be stretching. Since this uh, is a tensile specimen, it's going to be stretching. So you could expect this length is going to get bigger, right? So uh, we want to find the delta. I'll call it AB. So it's equal to PL over AE. And this P is uh, 600. The length is 2 inches. And uh, the area, the cross-sectional area, is 1 half times 1 16. And um, the Young's modulus was given as 29 times 10 to the 6 PSI. So after substituting all that in, you get 0 0.001324 inches. Uh, so that's delta AB. So that's for part one. And then part, part two, they ask for the width of the portion AB. They want to know the change in this width. So how are we going to get that? You guys learned uh, Hooke's Law? Okay, so, all right, so I'll call this, uh, okay, this is outwards is Z, this is X, and this is Y. All right, these are di the directions, okay? So um, I'll call this, this is, so this is a Y direction, the thickness is the Z direction, and the X direction is along the 600 pound force. Okay, so we want epsilon x. Uh, well, actually, we don't need epsilon x. We need epsilon y because we want to know this portion. So we know, need to know epsilon y. And what is epsilon y? It's not just stress. It's not just the stress over the Young's uh, the Young's modulus. There's a there's a shrinking effect from the Poisson ratio. So it's sigma y over e 
minus mu times sigma z over e minus mu sigma x over e. Uh, so this, this causes a shrinking effect. Um, all right, so now let me ask you guys, what's sigma y and sigma z? Do you guys know? It's, it's only loaded in the x direction. So there's no stress in those directions. So you guys can, it's zero, yeah. So this is uh, zero, and um, this is also zero. So the only stress we have is in the x direction. So we're going to have to find that. So we know epsilon y is equal to minus the Poisson ratio times sigma x over e. OK, so we need to find sigma x. And what is sigma x? It's equal to force over area, P over A. And P is 600 pounds over the cross-sectional area. It's uh, 1 half of an inch multiplied by the thickness, which is 1 16th of an inch. OK, so sigma x is <clears throat> OK, so it's 19.2 KSI. OK. All right, so um, now that we found the stress in the x direction, we can substitute this back into here because they give you the material properties. They give you the Poisson ratio is 0.3, and they also give you the Young's modulus is 29 times 10 to the 6 psi. Okay, so when you substitute those in and you substitute the value for sigma x, you get the strain in the y direction. So uh, epsilon y is equal to, um, where is it? It's minus 0 0.00019. And you would imagine it's going to be really small. 6, 2, 1. OK, so that's a strain in the y direction. And at the same token, we know also we could get the strain in the, well, I'll, I'll hold up off on that first. So we have the strain in the y direction. So we know that we want to know the change in length over here. So the change in length is delta in the y direction is equal to the strain in the y direction times its original length. So I'll call that Ly. So this length I'll call Ly. And instead of T, I'll call this uh, Lz. OK? All right, so um, we know the strain in the y. We just calculated it. We know this original length is a half. So when you multiply them, you get the delta in the y direction. So the delta in the y direction is equal to, substitute this in over here, uh, substitute one half over here, and you get minus 99.3 times 10 to the negative 6 inches, okay? So this is for part B of the problem. <coughs> For part A of the problem, they were asking for what again? Oh, they were asking for this. Uh, and then for part C, they asked for uh, the change in thickness of portion AB. Okay, so now they want to know the change in the thickness, which is LZ. I called that LZ. The original length is LZ. So they want to know how much that changes. So you're going to have to find the strain again in the z direction. So you're going to have to use Hooke's law. So this is getting pretty messy. Can I erase stuff? OK. All right, so I'll erase this. Alright, so what's the strain in the z direction? Z direction. I'll let you guys try. Same thing. Huh? Same thing. It's the same thing. Okay, so yeah, you're right. So it's sigma z over e minus the Poisson ratio of sigma y over e minus the Poisson ratio of sigma x over e. And sigma x is the only thing that uh, is happening right now because it's uniaxial tension in the x direction. So there's a sigma x, there's no sigma y because it's not loaded in the y direction or the z direction. So these are both zero. So it's the same thing. So sigma, I mean epsilon z is equal to epsilon y. 
which is equal to minus mu sigma x over e. Okay? So it's the same result. So what was that value again? I shouldn't have erased it. Point zero, zero, one, nine. <laughs> yeah, minus zero, 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 one, nine, eight, six. Two, one. Okay, so we get the strain in the z direction. Now we want the change in length and thickness. So delta um, delta z is equal to epsilon z times l z, and l z was that uh, thickness length. L z is equal to one sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so we can substitute uh, one sixteenth in here and uh, epsilon z. So substitute this in here and LZ into here, you get delta Z is equal to minus 12.41 uh, times 10, oops, what am I writing? 10 to the negative 6 inches. Okay. And then for the third part, uh, the fourth part of the problem, they ask for uh, the change in the area. So they want the change in the area. Um, what? Uh, um, what's LZ? Oh, LZ is a thickness. So like you could imagine this is like actually like this. So LZ is this distance <laughs> from here to here. Okay. This LZ. So it's the thickness of this member. Any other questions? All right, so we want the change in length now. Okay. Where's that? I notice I supposed to put a negative here. Thanks. All right. All right, so let me ask you guys, what do you think uh, the change in area is? Zero. Uh -huh. Zero. Zero? No, there's going to be a original area is, so A naught is equal to, uh, I'll call it L, I'll use the variables, Ly times Lz, right? And um, the A we have now from shrinking is, um, well, it's, we said it was, uh, delta, we calculated the delta in the y direction and the delta in the z direction. So, um, I actually have this backwards. All right, so, hold on. So, um, the delta we got was, so it's Ly times Lz minus the deltas in the, the z direction. Wait, no, that's not right. Wait, that's not right, is it? No, no, that's not right. No, yeah, you're confused. I was getting confused. All right, all right, wait. Let's think about this. All right, we have the delta in the y direction, right? And that's equal to epsilon y times ly. And we have the delta in the z direction, which is equal to epsilon z times lz. Um, so those are going to be the change in lengths. So the original length. So we want to find out what it what it is after it shrinks, right? So um, so you have L Y, that's the original uh, length, and then you have to do plus delta plus delta Y, right? Because uh, this is going to actually be negative, so it's going to be shrinking. So that's this is going to be multiplied by um, L Z plus delta Z, right? So this is the area when it, sh when it shrinks. Um, and you could write this as Ly um, plus epsilon y Ly multiplied by Lz plus epsilon z Lz. OK, so this is the area after it shrinks. But the original area is Ly times Lz, right? So the original area is Ly times Lz. And then it's subtracted. Kaboom. Did it shut off? No. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So this is the original area. I'll call this a naught, and this is the area after it shrunk. So.
So um, this is equal to delta A. So delta A is the original area minus the shrunken area. Okay. Um, all right. So what you could do is you could multiply this out. And um, this term is going to cancel with this term once you multiply it out. So I'll just give you the solution for this. So delta, delta A is equal to... Delta A, after you multiply everything out, you know, epsilon Y is equal to epsilon Z. So it's equal to 2 uh, epsilon LY times L, uh, LZ uh, plus epsilon squared LY LZ. And um, the answer you get, so you could, this, this term is really small so you could neglect it. Well, the epsilon term, so you could say that tends to zero. And we know epsilon, epsilon is equal to minus 0 0.00019862.1. So after you substitute it into here, you get delta A is equal to minus 12.41 times 10 to, to the negative 6 inches squared. Alright. Yeah, that's not what you said right now. No, no. Yeah. Because I was thinking about your answer and I'm like, wait, that's not what I mean. Okay. It's okay. Alright, so uh, any questions? <laughs> okay. Um, in the, um, uh, um, in, in like the delta A goes, uh, it, it's equal to two times. Uh, part of that symbol is um, L Y like um, um, couldn't it be like a, couldn't it be like um, like a, this should um, be that's on sub Y or something. What? Yeah, oh, oh, I called. Okay, so I forgot to tell you guys. I called epsilon Y since epsilon Y is equal to epsilon Z. Whoops. I just call that epsilon. They're all equal to each other, so I just call, instead of y, I just call, I combined the terms after I multiplied it out. Alright, next problem. Is it still recording? Yeah. They give you this condition called plane strain. So they give you this problem, sit, uh, epsilon z is equal to zero, and they want you to prove, so this is given. This is given. Okay, so they want you to uh, prove sigma z is equal to uh, the Poisson ratio times sigma x plus sigma y. So they want you to prove that relationship. They want you to also prove that epsilon x is 1 over e. So this is just a proof of math problem. 1 minus uh, the Poisson ratio squared times sigma x minus the Poisson ratio 1 uh, plus the Poisson ratio sigma x. Okay, so they want you to prove that. And they also want uh, you to prove the strain in the y direction is 1 over epsilon, uh, sorry, 1 over the Young's modulus, 1 minus the Poisson ratio squared, sigma y minus the Poisson ratio, 1 plus the Poisson ratio, sigma x. Okay. So they want you to prove these equations. <laughs> All right. So this is going to take up the whole board. So uh, you guys can write this down, and can I erase it? As fast as it's up. It's gone. So can I erase? You guys got it. It's going to be on YouTube later, guys. Yeah. Oh, weird. Well, maybe. Uh, don't say maybe. <laughs> it's still recording. No.
on Black Order. Huh? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm just going to upload it to Black Order. Well, I didn't upload it yet. Yeah. yeah. But I will upload it. Okay. All right, so they want you to prove these relationships. So what would we start with? All right, knowing, knowing that this is a plane strain relationship, so they give you uh, epsilon z is 0. So we have to use Hooke's law again to determine all these relationships. So I'll list them all out. Uh, epsilon x is equal to sigma x over the Young's modulus minus the Poisson ratio sigma y over the Young's modulus minus the Poisson ratio sigma z over uh, the Young's modulus. OK. Well, I'll list it for each direction. for the z-direction. Sigma x. <coughs> no, I said x already, so this is y. OK. All right, so you have three equations. So this is 1, 2, 3. And remember, they gave you uh, the plane strain relationship. Uh, the plane strain uh, condition where so this is equal this equation down here is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero and this is equation three. Oh boy. Alright, so let's prove the first one. The first one we can get right off the bat. If we look at this equation, equation three, right? Uh, everything is divided by the Young's modulus, so if you move it to the other side, it's, it, it goes to zero, right? E times zero is zero. So, all right, so let's just get rid of these E's. So you have uh, sigma Z minus the Poisson ratio sigma X minus the Poisson <coughs> ratio sigma Y is equal to zero, correct? All right, so they want the first relationship, they wanted you to prove uh, the relationship between z, sigma z and uh, sigma x and sigma y, right? Okay, so you can just move this to the other side. So you have sigma z is equal to the Poisson ratio times sigma x plus sigma y. You guys see that? Just move this over, factor out the Poisson ratio, and that's what you get. All right, so the first relationship was proven. Okay, so we have to pr prove the other ones. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, so once you prove this, I'll call this equation four. You could stick this relationship into this one and this one, and you'll get the other relationships. So you're just taking sigma z, so you're taking this and sticking it in here, and this and sticking it in over here. So that'll prove the other relationships. So um, let's start with epsilon x. All right, so epsilon x is equal to sigma x over e minus the Poisson ratio of sigma y over e minus the Poisson ratio uh, over e, and we're sticking in sigma z. So this is multiplied by the Poisson ratio, uh, which is multiplied. So I just took, the, and then um, you have the rest of the equation. You have minus uh, the Poisson ratio, 1 plus the Poisson ratio times sigma y. You guys agree? Now it's proven, so we have to prove uh, the last relationship. So we will do the we'll do the same treatment on uh, epsilon y. Do I have to do it? You guys get the point. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're just sticking this into here and solving.
All right, whatever. This is a picture. Okay, so basically this is Robert and this is Robert. And um, they have a force P over here. So this force P they give you as uh, 45 kilonewtons. And they ask, uh, they also give you uh, the modulus of uh, rigid, uh, I can't pronounce that word. They give you G, the shear modulus. Um, so this is uh, 12 MPA. And um, they also give you tau has to be less than or equal to 1.4 MPA. And they also give you the condition that delta has to be greater than or equal to 5 uh, millimeters. Okay, so they give you these conditions and they want you to determine A and, uh, a and B. Yeah. So A is this distance from here to here. This is A and this is A. And um, this is rubber. Rubber. And this is rubber. Okay. And they give you this distance. They actually don't give it to you. You're looking for this. You're looking for B and A, and they give you this distance from here to here. So this is a uh, hundred millimeters. Okay. So, um, all right. So, can you guys agree? If this is rubber, these two materials are rubber, and uh, this is being pushed. This is going to be sheared, and so is this going to. This is also going to be sheared. So what are the forces on these, like this surface over here? It's one half of P. So we know tau is equal to P over 2A. Okay, so it's one half P over A. So tau is equal to uh, P over 2A. So we know that uh, shear, shear stress condition, they give it to you. And uh, we want to solve for A. So A is equal to, I'll ask you guys what A is after. So A, you move A over, so you have P over 2 times tau. So uh, P in this case is uh, 45 times 10 to the 3 newtons over uh, 2 times 1.4 uh, times 10 to the 6 uh, PA. All right. So the area they give you is, and the area you get from that is, uh, 0 0.01607 meters squared. All right, so, and what's A in this case? This is important to know, because like, something like this could be on the exam. So this is for shear stress. So you're pushing this, and there's a force, there's one half P going this way, one half P going this way. So um, what is the area? It's acting on this area, right? This area. You guys see it? So what is that area? It's C times B, right? So C times B, so that's equal to A. And we found A to be, uh, A is uh, 0 0.01607 meters. So you can solve for, we know C is 100 millimeters. They give you that, so we can solve for B. B is A over C. And so you get, when you plug in the values, you get, uh, 160.7. So this is the answer for B, and then they want uh, they want to know what they want to know what A is. Okay, so we just determine this length, and we just determine we need to determine this length. So from from A, we could get um, from the delta constraint, we could get A. So let me erase this stuff. Okay, I'm going to draw a little picture of what this is looking like on uh, the rubber surface. So the rubber surface looks like this. Okay, so it's getting sheared. So there's going to be this distance, which is A, and this distance is delta. Um, and this is, okay, like I said before, this is a half B, and this is a half B. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So they give you um, what? They give you the shear stress, and they give you uh, the value of G, the modulus of uh, 
whatever, the shear modulus. Okay, so we could get uh, we could get gamma, which is tau uh, the shear stress over G, and gamma is equal to uh, 1.4 MPa divided by 12 MPa. So gamma is equal to um, 0.17, and now that we have this, we also know that gamma is equal to delta over A. It's a slope. It's this divided by this. So this is equal to, um, sorry, we, we know we, this is equal to this value over here, 0.117. So you could solve for A. So A is equal to delta over uh, gamma. All right, so we know this value, we know this value, so you can get A is equal to 42.74 4, millimeters. So this is TR over J. This is a formula for the shear stress and torsion. Okay. Um, so R is equal to DS over 2, and J is equal to pi. For, for a circular uh, rod, it's pi over 2 times uh, R to the 4th. And this is equal to, R is equal to DS over 2, so you can substitute that in if you want it in terms of the diameter. Or you could just solve for the radius in this case, it's 1.5 over 2, so that's equal to 0.75, and this is in inches. So you could uh, substitute this radius into here, and you could get determine J, and then you can just substitute it into the equation. You could rearrange for T. Because they give you this, they give you this constraint, they give you this as 12 KSI, so you could solve for J, and then you could uh, substitute for R, move this to the other side, so you get the torque is equal to uh, tau S J um, over R. Okay, so the torque you get after plugging this in, you get um, 7.9 
five kips times an inch. Okay? All right, so this is the torque for the steel constraint, but there's also um, there's also a shear, they also give you the shear for the bronze. So we have to determine the torque from this constraint too. And then we're gonna have to pick the smallest one. Okay? Uh, because if you pick the larger one, then, then um, the brass is gonna shear off. Okay, so, um, sorry, the steel is gonna shear off as you're gonna see in a second. So, all right, so now we have to determine, uh, okay, so tau B is equal to T times R over J. All right, so this R is different. R is measured from the center line over here, right? So R is this distance from here to here, right? So this is R, because we want the maximum shear. The maximum shear stress is going to occur over here, OK? Because uh, it's, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like a profile like this. It's like largest over here, and then it gets smaller and smaller. You guys agree? So it's going to be like a triangle. And over here, it's going to be the smallest. Over here, it's going to be the largest. So um, the R you want is 3 inches divided by 2. So this is the R. Okay, so, um, all right, so now J, in this case, J is going to be different because uh, what we want the J for the bronze, and there's no material over here. So you're going to have to find this radius, um, and then you're going to have to subtract it from this radius, and they're both going to be to the fourth power. So um, maybe I should just write it separately. So the J in this case is equal to pi over 2 multiplied by... So, um, I'll call this R, and I'll call this, maybe I'll call this RO and RI. Alright, so do you guys know what RI is? This is RO to the fourth minus RI to the fourth. Alright, so what's RO? RO is it equal to 3 over 2? That's inches, but what is Ri? Okay, so Ri is, it's, it's Ro minus the thickness, right? So um, Ri is equal to Ro minus the thickness T. Okay, so that's, that's equal to 3 halves minus 1 fourth. Um, all right. So, okay, so whatever this equals to. Um, so now you know the, the inner radius and you know the outer radius. So, so this is J for uh, the bronze. I'll call this B for bronze. Okay, so you can determine this value. Stick this value into here, this one into here. You can get JB. And then um, they gave you the constraint for bronze. So you can solve for the torque again. So the torque is equal to uh, tau B times JB over R. Okay, so R in this case is what? I said before, this is R norm. I called it R norm. Okay, um, so T is equal to tau B. Uh, JB is uh, pi over 2 times R naught to the fourth minus RI to the fourth. And I said Ri is equal to R0 minus T. So you can substitute this in here. And then R0 is on the bottom here. And we know R0 is uh, 3 over 2. Okay, so the, tau, uh, the torque you get in this case is it's 19.2 kips times an inch. Okay, so what you're going to notice here, the torque is much larger over here. So if you use a larger torque, this this uh, this steel the steel rod's going to shear off because the torque was much less. So you want to take the smaller torque so nothing fails. So you, your answer is uh, seven. You take a smaller one from uh, the steel constraint, uh, seven point nine five kips times an inch. Okay, so you take this value. Always take the smaller value. Okay. 
All right, whatever. I'll just end here because I know the last problem is pretty easy. You guys want me to go over it? Yeah.